All right, so just as we have single phase RCDs, we also have three phase RCDs. And they are wired in three phase circuits to protect the wiring and the uses of the wiring against electrical hazards. Okay, so a three phase RCD in a three phase circuit works just the way a single phase RCD works in a single phase circuit but then with the single phase rcd it looks very simple to wire it in a circuit but what about wiring a three phase rcd in a three phase circuit there are times that for residential installations three phase consumer units are used and whether you are using a single phase consumer unit or a three phase consumer unit there must be an rcd as part of the wiring to protect the users against electric shock and leakages that can cause fire and damage to electrical equipment. There are two ways that you can go about this. In my previous videos on RCDs, I explained what RCD is. I also explained the difference between RCBO and RCCB. I also made videos on how RCDs and RCBOs work in an electrical circuit and then how to install them properly. So in a three-phase wiring also, when we are using three-phase consumer units, we must include RCDs, especially when we have circuits like water heaters in the wiring. It is a must that those circuits should be protected against electric shock. Now, when selecting an RCD for a three-phase consumer unit, you can either choose between an RCCB and then an RCBO. In a video I have shared under this one, I explained what the difference is between an RCCB and then an RCBO. Please, you can check that for reference. And the choice between RCCB and RCBO will also determine how you are going to wire it in the three-phase consumer unit. All right, so for instance, this is a three-phase consumer unit, and then usually it comes with a four-pool main breaker. So we have one, two, three, four pools. That is connected to the miniature circuit breakers, and then the neutral bar that will be used for the neutral connections in the wiring. But then for protection against shock and electric fires that may result from leakages, there is the need for us to include an RCD in this consumer unit. And so usually, most of the time, you realize that the DIN reel on which the main breaker is fixed is extended to be able to accommodate at least one RCD for this system. Now, when using RCDs in a three-phase wiring system, the best thing to do is to segregate the circuit and protect each group with one RCD. But for economic reasons, if you can't do that, then at least there must be one RCD to protect the whole system. The only disadvantage with using only one RCD is that in a wiring where we are using this consumer unit, we would definitely be having lighting circuits and power circuits. So if we are using only one RCD, what it simply means is that when there is a fault, even in our lighting circuit, the whole system goes off, including all the power circuits. Likewise, if there is a problem in a socket or in any of the power circuits, the whole system goes off, including the lights. That is what happens when we use just one RCD to protect this whole wiring. That is why it is always advisable to split the circuits into two or more, and then protect each group with an RCD. So that, for instance, we may group all the lighting circuits, we may group all the sockets, we may group all the water heaters, we may group all the air conditioners, and then protect them with separate RCDs. So that in case there is a fault in one of the AC circuits, it's only the ACs that will go off. And then if there is a fault in the lighting circuit, you should still have your sockets and other circuits working properly. Okay. Another alternative is you can also use RCBOs to replace these individual 
miniature circuit breakers. So for instance, if this breaker is meant to be wired for a water heater, we would have to replace this breaker with an RCBO that is rated 32 amps. All right, so you can use RCBOs for the individual circuits instead of using one RCD for the whole circuit. Okay, one thing that um, is important to know also is that when you are using one RCD for the whole circuit, you must ensure that whether it is RCCB or an RCBO, it must have a rated capacity that will be able to withstand the full load current expected for the installation. And basically, if you are using it for residential purposes, then the operating residual current shouldn't be less than 0.03 amps. It could be less, but it shouldn't be more than that. Good. This is actually an RCBO. So here, there are two ways that we can incorporate this in this consumer unit. If possible, we can remove this breaker and then connect this RCBO in place of the main breaker. So in that case, this one will be serving as our main breaker at the same time. It will also be offering RCD protection to the wiring. All right, so let's try and see if we can replace this one with this one. We have to lose the output. We remove the DIN rail. Okay. So we want to do away with this and then bring this on board. All right, so obviously um, we can't do this replacement because the terminals are not aligned with the provided connection. Okay, so normally this comes readily with the consumer unit. So we can still uh, keep it. And then, do this is an RCBO. We will now be only interested in the RCD side. So we are going to use this together with the MCB. All right, so I still have to connect the MCB back, and then we look at how to attach the RCD to it. Okay, so we bring this one close to the main breaker. All right, so the most important thing I want to show in this video is how to connect the RCD like this in a three-phase consumer unit. So we have our four main wires that usually come from the energy meter. So I have brown, I have black, I have gray, and then I have blue. So brown comes first. Then black comes. Gray comes next. And then blue comes for neutral. Okay. So now we have this and then we have this. Good. So the next connection, first we take a connection from the output of brown brown is actually used as l1 and then that will feed l1 and then that comes to l1 of the main mcb then another connection from output of l2 And then that becomes input to L2 of the main 
MCB. Then another connection from output of L3. And that goes as input to L3 of main MCB. Then lastly, we have output of neutral. To input to the input of main MCB. All right, so simply this is how to wire an RCD in a three phase consumer unit. I believe you have learned something useful from this video. If you do, kindly share with others to also benefit. And again, if you want to learn more about RCDs and how they work, please kindly check below this video. I have a lot of videos on RCDs that you can learn from. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay connected and please ensure you subscribe in case you have not yet done that. See you in my next video.